Hi guys, welcome back. If you are new here, hello, welcome. I'm Chantal Purcell, and I've been sharing my experiences through cancer and treatments and life during cancer and life after cancer and surgeries and just all sorts of stuff. So if you are new here, I'll just invite you to go back and watch some of the previous videos that'll kind of explain to how we got to where we are today. Today, I'm actually going to speak specifically to uh, my lymphedema folks. So um, these are my guys and gals who have had breast cancer, maybe had some lymph nodes removed or had radiation, maybe multiple things that has caused lymphedema. And so now you are in a situation where you have to wear a compression garment um, or and also maybe a nighttime garment um, as well as potentially wrapping your arm. So I'm gonna talk more specifically today about how I wrap my arm for lymphedema. So um, my current situation is a little bit different. I did have surgery for lymphedema um, five weeks ago, I'm um, on the other side of that surgery, well recovered with a tiny little snafu that I wound up paralyzed from my shoulder, so I can move my shoulder, but below my shoulder to my wrist. Uh, the fingers still work there, so um, I have to give a little assistance with my other hand. So that's the only difference from hopefully my situation to yours. Hopefully you'll have both hands, um, but we kind of use just one hand really for doing this anyway. Um, so I will say, Back when I first heard and was told like, you know, oh, we'll show you how to wrap yourself your lymphedema. I mean, I was so completely, number one, overwhelmed and quite honestly, in absolute disbelief. I was like, there's no way I can do this on my own. Like, I'm gonna, I'm like already planned in my head, like I'm gonna have to have someone come help me. Um, so I will, I'm so happy to share with you that it is absolutely possible on our own. We can do this. You've got this. So it takes a little bit of practice a couple of times and you'll figure out what works for you. I'm not gonna say my way is the only way or the right way. It's really honestly whatever works for you. So I'm just gonna share a little about um, how, I do, how I do it for me. So um, there's, first off, before I sit down to start wrapping, I make sure I have all of my supplies. I'm gonna go over really quickly what those supplies are and, um, and I'll do my best to link them in the description box or whatever it is. Yeah, the description box. Um, I'll try to share some links so that you can easily find some of these things on your own if you need. Um, so if you need to wrap your fingers, that's the first place that we would start. I would actually first by taking this off, but I'm gonna wait until I'm ready to go. And then, um, but if you need to wrap your fingers, at this current phase today, I actually don't need to wrap my fingers. I haven't had a lot of um, swelling in my hand and fingers, but if you do, I'm gonna show you how and what you need. Um, so there's this stuff called Elastomool, M-U-L-L, -L, Elastomool. I'll link everything. This one is a two inch wide. Don't know how much you can see. And this one that I've got opened is one inch. I think one inch works pretty well for fingers, but I do have the um, two inch one as well. You're gonna wrap each finger individually anchoring somewhere like I like to anchor around my hand and when I say anchor it's just a starting place right so um, I will start by just kind of holding it with my thumb do and I usually for an anchor I like to do maybe like two times around so one and then two and then I would start with a finger and I actually kind of like going over here to the pinky so we would just kind of go around and around and around um, and I will say this stuff is, it's kind of like a stretchy gauze. Um, it's a pain, it's a pain in the butt. Don't drop your roll, that's a bigger pain in the butt. Um, so yeah, you're saying it here, what not to do. And what I was gonna say is this stuff's kind of a pain because you can't really like wash your hands. Um, it does start to kind of unravel or whatever. So try to get it on there snug. Anticipate because it's stretchy, it's going to stretch. Um, it will continue stretching, that's the downside. Um, so you'll want to kind of get it a little snug. Don't do anything that feels like it's cutting your circulation off or you've got anything turning like red or purple, like that's a bad sign. Um, if it's tingly, you know, or really warm, those could also be bad signs. So you just want to make sure when you are wrapping your fingers or your arm that we're not going too tight, but you definitely want to go snug enough, right? Um, so we would continue wrapping this pinky. I would then, um, actually, I could continue and go right over here to the um, to the finger beside it. 
and just kind of start wrapping that guy. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing of wrapping the fingers, but that's kind of how you do it. And if you ever need to kind of like tie it off, you know, wrap it around your hand, use a little tape, and then start a new anchor and a new wrap for the others. I like to wrap my thumb independently, so I would definitely start. So I usually do one anchor for my fingers and wrap all of my fingers. Kind of um, once I finish one, then I kind of go over, jump to the next finger. I like to wrap my thumb independently, so I would do a new anchor, um, whether it be around my hand or around my wrist, and um, anchor that and then do that thumb separately because your thumb's out here kind of little guy all by himself out here. So um, it just helps it to stay on. So for today, I actually do not need the hand wrapped. Um, but those are the that's how and those are the supplies needed for that. My second step, so today I'll go ahead because I actually do need to wrap. So, um, so my very next step is to put on, it's a kind of like a little um, stocking at, I think is what they call it. It is a sort of long, sort of like a little sock. Doesn't have a ton of stretch to it. A little, a little stretchy, but not super stretchy. Um, but it, um, this is a used one. It actually comes in a whole roll where you, if you had to, you could just cut the length that works for you. So this is actually a whole roll of stocking net. And if I needed a new piece, today I already have one. Um, if I needed a new piece, I would start kind of like around my hand and then I would roll it out and kind of get an idea how much I need. And I would recommend make it longer than you need rather than shorter. So I wanna go up and definitely make sure I have a lot of room for my elbow and go all the way to my shoulder. And then I would come back with my scissors and um, snip that off. And that would be my piece that I'm using. I will show you what I have already done to um, allow for the thumb is bear with me guys i'm so sorry it's hard to do um, a little bit with one hand but um you can probably see i've notched out just like a little half circle there um a little ways down it's this isn't rocket science like it doesn't have to be like exacto um so it's not really like you know wrong if you do it in the wrong place so you'll figure it out and it's not going to be bad if you do it too big or you'll know if it's too small if it's too tight um but i like to make sure that there is plenty of room um, for my thumb to move and that it's not going to cut into that little um, web, you know, on the inside of your thumb. I'm going ahead and pull all of this up. And I kind of pull it over my shoulder just to hold it in place while I get the rest of the stuff done. Um, and then I can always roll that down when I'm finished. Um, the next step is you have a couple of choices. There is kind of like this um, super soft cottony and it does not always have that hole but you have to you can cut your little hole if you want to anchor to your thumb um, but it's like a roll of super soft cottony um, stuff and this is actually what it looks like in the packaging and again I will link these things um, this is called Artiflex A-R-T-I-F-L-E-X I believe I don't have my glasses on um, so anyway, Artiflex, and then this is a three inch roll, which works really well for the arm. They do have it in comparison. You can kind of see, I think that's like a five inch roll or whatever. The bigger one, I feel like is kind of a little wide for an arm, but I mean, you know, to each your own, you might decide you want to go up and maybe back a little bit. Um, the three inch one works well for me, but again, you know, whatever works best for you. We start with everything rolled up and I will tell you guys, you get used to rolling all these things up all by yourself and you can even do it with one hand. You don't even have to cut this. You literally just poke uh, through the cotton. You can poke your um, thumb through and make like a little thumb hole for it. The other thing I wanna go, um, before I go too much further, is the other option instead of the cottony kind of filling roll, there is a foam roll and I don't have the outer packaging of this particular one, but it is a, um, kind of like a thin foam, uh, not a lot of stretch, but it does have like a little gift. So it's a uh, give, so it's soft. And um, some physical therapists really like and recommend using this for wrapping for lymphedema. So again, it's whatever you, your doctor, your physical therapist, um, or maybe even your own personal preference, right? Um, so um, this is another option. Today, I'm actually gonna use the soft cottony stuff. I actually did this yesterday. And uh, while I'm doing this, I'll just kind of be talking while I'm wrapping. Um, one thing I would like to mention, so I'm just gonna like anchor this on my thumb and start wrapping around. And I'm also gonna pull it 
a little snug, like, you know, wanna kind of make, uh, I'm not gonna cut circulation off or anything like that. Um, and you might see me move kind of weird, and that's mostly because this arm, uh, you know, it's paralyzed. So mine's a little bit different than your situation. But if it moves wonky, just know yours probably won't. Um, but anyway, so what I was going to mention while I do this, while I drop everything, is that um, the real difference between wearing like your daytime compression sleeve versus wrapping like this is the daytime or whatever you want to call it like whenever you wear it I, um, they usually don't recommend wearing those overnight is why i call it a daytime compression sleeve but a compression sleeve works mostly to try to uh, prevent your arm from uh swelling you know m swelling more kind of like to hold it status quo right um the idea and the point behind wrapping is actually working compression so if you are swollen it's going to help to reduce your swelling. So there is definitely a difference between the compression. Um, so, you know, like I have, just because my situation, you know, I actually just f finished physical therapy today for my paralyzed arm. So I was kind of working, but it's also my lymphedema arm. So I was kind of working it a little bit. I want to make sure that if there was any swelling caused, during those exercises and things that we did today. And literally, this is what you wouldn't necessarily have to do because you could probably, you know, well, anyway, I kind of prop my arm against whatever I need to, to kind of like hold the roll so it doesn't fall off and start unraveling all by itself. Not like I've ever had that happen. Haha, <laughs> lots of times. Um, sometimes I actually get it under here and I'll like, hold my arm to my boob. I mean, use whatever you can, you know, whatever you got, whatever you have, um, whatever works for you. And so we're just gonna keep rolling. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I wore my compression during physical therapy today, um, but I actually want to actively work to reduce any swelling that might have happened, um, you know, during that. So that's why I'm actually wrapping and I've just kind of been doing it um, at, you know, in the evening kind of thing and overnight. So, um, next thing you need is tape. I actually forgot to mention that on my supply list, but um, a good little roll of tape. Um, I will link uh, the name of this one in the description box because there are different ones that I've noticed some work better than others. So that this tape is really good. It's like a, I don't even know, I think it's like a two inch roll or whatever. Um, you can easily tear it, easily tear it, there we go. Um, and then I don't actually need it this wide, so it tears really easily in half. So bingo there, I already have two pieces. So just kind of stick it to this guy. So anyway, some tapes work better than others. Paper tape, you guys, just don't even waste your time or money. Um, it's highly frustrating, and for me, uh, my opinion, it doesn't work as well. Okay, so now we've got the stockingette and the cushy layer or your foam layer on. Now we're ready to start wrapping. And um, so these bandages, everyone kind of knows them as like ace bandages. And um, now there are different types. So this is a different name of one. I forgot the name of it. Um, but it is, it's not quite as stretchy as an ace bandage, but I know my physical therapist has, um, or my lymphedema therapist has definitely wrapped me in normal ACE bandages before. Some have used these that have like a little less stretch, um, but they all kind of are, you know, to do the same thing. Um, I think the shorter one is about a two inch, uh, three inch and four inch, I believe. Um, whatever works for you. And I do personally like the narrower, um, the more narrow roll for around my hand. So I always start with the narrow roll around my hand. So I think this one's like a two inch roll. And then the others can be whatever you like them to be. They don't have to be different from each other. They can both be the same, um, but you're going to need usually like a good three bandages, maybe more, maybe less. Um, I'm kind of like just an average size person. I think I'm around, you know, like 140 pounds, five, six or so. Um, might have fibbed a tiny bit. I'm a couple pounds higher. I'm a couple pounds up from 140. Don't judge me. Um, anyway, so normally 
I'm around 140. Um, but you know, we're all, we come in all shapes and sizes. So however many work for you, that's the right number for you. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna start off by using the, um, the two inch roll and I'm gonna start by wrapping my hand. And um, one thing I like to do is, these are washable by the way. So I wash um, these, uh, the um, whatever, ace bandages, and I also wash the stockingette. Um, I like to put them in like a laundry bag so they don't wrap around like inside my washer, but you know, whatever works for you. But they're completely washable. I do recommend using a like a, a free soap, like a Tide free or all free or whatever, like without the softeners. Um, you don't really want fabric softener um, on these because it'll sort of change the elastin of the bandage. But um, the other thing, so after you wash them and dry them on like high heat, um, then you can roll them up and you can actually roll them really well even with just one hand because I have proven a million times I do, I roll these like all the time. Um, and then the other thing I like to do is put tape on them to hold them tight. And so when I go to use them, my tape is already ready. Um, so the only thing that I really need new tape for is um, like my finger bandages if I'm wrapping my fingers and my little soft cottony thing because once I pull it off the cottony thing, it's got cotton all over it. Um, so we're gonna start wrapping. So again, I like to start with an anchor around my wrist. So I'm gonna go, I like to go two times. So that's one and a little different because I can't hold my hand up so one and two so I've got my two anchors and this is my hand wrapping so now I'm gonna start going up and around my hand even though my hand doesn't swell a whole lot I want to make sure that once I'm compressing my arm I'm not compressing and moving everything down so I'm not gonna wrap my fingers but I want to make sure that I'm not gonna push everything down into my hand so that's why I'm actually wrapping my hand um, so around um, and then I like to kind of like get a good one around the top part of my hand, back down around my wrist, from my wrist back up between my thumb and finger. I do another one around the top portion, back down to the wrist, and then back through the thumb and finger. One more time around the top part of the hand and then down to the wrist again. And then I'm gonna finish it off around just the wrist and then start kind of going up the arm. And this is, this is where like it's a little, it's a little easier if you're not um, paralyzed that you can actually like hold it up yourself, but I'm just kind of making do. So now I finished off that roll. I need to hold it in place. I'm literally using my knee here. I have gotten very good at using um, different parts of my body to do different jobs. So a lot of it because of this, just not being able to, you know, whatever, lift or move my arm. So we got the hand done. So now we're ready for one of the other rolls. And I'll probably fast forward through um, some of this just for, you know, to save you guys. Um, you'll see what I'm doing. You don't necessarily have to hear everything I'm saying, but I'll probably fast forward through some of this um, because it does get to be a little repetitive here. So um, the main thing you wanna do is you wanna feel to know where to start your next roll. You wanna feel and feel where it starts getting um, from thicker to thinner. Where it gets thinner is where you're gonna start that next roll. So mine gets thinner right here. So that's exactly where I'm gonna start that second roll. And I'm gonna do the same as I did before. I'm going to anchor Ooh, it'd be so much easier if it could move on its own. I'm gonna anchor it with um, two wraps around in that same spot just to anchor it. And then we'll just start making our way up the arm. And I'm gonna pull on this just a good little bit actually because I want, again, this is a working compression. This is, I want to reduce um, you know, the size of my arm. I want to reduce the swelling and um, that's kind of what we got to do. So I'm going to pull it pretty snug. Again, not so much that like my circulation cuts off, but you would be surprised how snug you can actually pull these things without it cutting your circulation off. So, um, you know, if you're ever like a little timid, 
go for it once, just go for it and pull it a little more than you think you might should. Um, and you can try it. Well, I mean, I don't want to advise you wrong. I'm definitely not a doctor, um, but that's kind of what I did for myself. I'll just say that. That's what I did for myself because after experiencing, I'm going to have to shift legs here because I can't, um, after experiencing how I felt when it was wrapped by another person, like, you know, with the nurses or therapists, then I was like, oh, wow, that's definitely more snug than what I would have done or what I have done. So, um, again, I mean, like, thankfully I'm a little limber here or nimble, whatever, but, um, you know, I'm kind of just, I'm sitting on, you know, whatever cross-legged on my sofa and kind of pulling up my knee where I needed and, um, you know, to hold this thing as I go around, you know, and I can do like that to hold it in place to let me get my hand around there. So that's kind of how we do that. Um, so now that roll is finished. I'm going to use my knee to kind of hold that in place. Or if I had like a pillow, I could move it. I mean, again, if you can, if you're, you, I'm assuming you're not paralyzed. So if I wasn't paralyzed, I could actually just move my whole arm and rest it against this pillow for a second. But I can't do that. But you could. Um, so I'm going to get my tape. I always just stick the tape to like, I've got like a little sofa table like in front of my sofa, but whatever works for you, like you got a coffee table or something like that. I just like to, you know, as I peel it off and I have it ready, um, I stick it to the table so it's ready to peel off. So that just, it's thinking of kind of planning ahead, I think that makes it so much easier and really doable. So I am getting to my last wrap and here I didn't even stop talking this whole time and I thought I was gonna give you a break and fast forward through some of that, but as it happens, um, apparently I know how to fill up some time with my with my talking. I just talk a lot, y'all, but it's all right. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did before and I'm gonna feel where it goes from like feeling firm to feeling softer. It's kind of like a little thicker to thinner kind of thing. Mine's changing right around here. So that's going to be where I start this last wrap. And again, I'm going to start it exactly like I started the others is, um, with like two anchor holds. Oops. Two anchor holds. It's a little hard, um, sometimes, but I mean, I'll use my leg, but, um, again, I mean, Probably wouldn't be as difficult for you because you can kind of like, you know, hold it against a whatever pillow or something like that. So, um, but it's doable, doable. Look, I'm just sitting here like whatever, cross-legged on the couch. Um, so we just start going around and um, you want to overlap like a good, I actually like to overlap by, um, you know, maybe move it up about a quarter of a roll or a third of a roll, like each time. Um, so you're gonna like go over, you know, like overlap um, each trip around, you know, quite a bit. Um, sometimes, I mean, you might wanna, depending on your swelling, you might want to put a little bend in your elbow as you go around your elbow. Um, I used to do that a little more than I do now because I've learned for myself that it feels really snug and I feel like I'm very straight armed kind of, um, but it does have give and well, right now I can't really, I'm, I'm moving that with my, with my other leg and it looks like it's moving on its own, but it's not. Um, but you know, even if I could move my arm, I've kind of learned that it sort of bends some on its own. Like even if the bandage is um, snug around the whole elbow area, um, it does have give so you'll still be able to kind of like bend your elbow and you'll figure out you know what works good for you my main point in sharing this today is you know I know how I felt I felt so completely overwhelmed um, with the whole idea that I was gonna have to wrap myself and I was like oh my it just sounded and seemed impossible even after they did it on me especially after they did it on me I was like oh my god like you've got two hands and you're doing it on like a third party or a second whatever second party here like it's me doing it on me with like basically one hand kind of thing. Like I just didn't didn't feel like that was possible. So my whole point of doing this is just sharing with you how I do it and that it is possible. And I know it feels overwhelming at first, but believe me, like literally with just a couple of times, you'll get it too and you'll get good at it and you'll get your own little system. So 
Um, it just happened to end right here. I use the boob, it's good for something. Well, it's actually, I think some people call them um, foobs after you've had them all removed and reconstructed, so whatever you wanna call it. Um, I tend to still say boob, but whatever works for you. So I've taped it all off, got it all done, and then that extra that I had from up there, I'm gonna pull this down and it actually covers the tape because I have had it where, you know, I go and I put on like a hoodie or something like that and I go to take that hoodie off later and the tape, even though I've had it, you know, well stuck, it's like now stuck to the hoodie and then it all starts unraveling and like that's kind of a pain in the butt. So it's sort of helpful to cover um, the taped down sections with the extra stockingette. So that's it, you guys. That's how it goes. That's um, super doable. Um, I'm gonna not over talk like I normally do, but thank you for being here. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to you know leave them in the comment section below. And um, as always, you guys, I'm here every step of your journey. So if there's anything that I've been through that you're going through, um, I'm here, your future self, reaching my hand back to you now. Um, and I know that you'll do the same down the road in your journey. So um, if I can help you or support you in any way, my door's always open, my heart is definitely open, and I'm just sending you so much love for what you're going through or facing. And um, just know that you've got this, you can do this, you can do this. So, all right. So much love and um, until next time, we'll see you then, bye.